Human history is filled with many tales about God, angels, giants, and disasters. While these tales seem mythical at first, if you look closer, you'll find they show an alternative human history most fail to notice. The Book of Enoch is considered an apocryphal book of the Old Testament concerning events occurring before the birth and ministry of Jesus. This book is not recognized as part of divinely inspired scripture for most Christian denominations. The book has been discredited partially because it contains information about fallen angels who mate with humans and propagate the race called the Nihilim. The original text was lost at the end of the 4th century, but then recovered from Abyssinia in Ethiopia in 1773. The Ethiopian Christian sect is the only group including the Book of Enoch in their scriptures. Here we present to you the shocking mysteries of the Book of Enoch that have been banned from the Bible. Who was Enoch? From the Bible, we know that Enoch was Adam's great-great-great-great-grandson and Noah's great-grandfather who lived a holy and faithful life to the Lord. He also became the father of Methuselah, the longest living man. Throughout his three-plus centuries on earth, he has numerous other offspring. Enoch is also only one of two people taken straight to heaven, escaping death altogether. After 365 years on earth, God takes him away as stated in Genesis 5.24. The verb for take appears to mean snatched up or carried away, perhaps similar to the way God had taken Elijah the prophet. Throughout the years he lived, he walked in faith, and that made all the difference. No matter what happened, he trusted God, he obeyed God. God loved Enoch so much that he spared him the experience of death. Enoch is the subject of many Jewish and Christian traditions. He was considered the author of the book of Enoch and was also called the scribe of judgment. In the New Testament, Enoch is referenced in the Gospel of Luke, the Epistle to the Hebrews, and the Epistle of Jude, the last of which also quotes from it. He is venerated as a saint in the Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodoxy, and Oriental Orthodoxy. Enoch was a famous preacher. His message was one of God's judgment against humanity. His ministry was a precursor to the ministry of Noah, a preacher of righteousness and builder of the ark. With the extent of unrighteousness and ungodliness in the world, it was remarkable for a man to stand up and proclaim judgment on his neighbors. To know much more about the background of this mythical figure and the supernatural experiences he went through, we have to redirect our attention to the apocryphal books written by Enoch. Dead Sea Scrolls In late 1946 or early 1947, Bedouin teenagers were tending their goats and sheep near the ancient settlement of Qumran located on the northwest shore of the Dead Sea in what is now known as the West Bank. One of the young shepherds tossed a rock into an opening on the side of a cliff and was surprised to hear a shattering sound. He and his companions later entered the cave and found a collection of large clay jars, seven of which contained leather and papyrus scrolls. An antiquities dealer bought the cash which ultimately ended up in the hands of various scholars who estimated that the texts were over 2,000 years old. After the word of the discovery got out, Bedouin treasure hunters and archaeologists unearthed tens of thousands of additional scroll fragments from ten nearby caves. Together they make up between 800 and 900 manuscripts. It was the Book of Enoch which is comprised of five books, the Book of Watches, the Book of Parables, the Astronomical Book, the Dream Visions, and the Epistles of Enoch. The Book of Enoch The Book of Enoch is composed of various monumental works. They briefly introduce Enoch, the significant themes of rewards, punishment, the end of the world, and the final judgment. Book 1 includes chapters 6 to 36 and is primarily about angels, the tree of life, Jerusalem, and the universe. The Book of the Watcher tells the story of fallen angels from Genesis 6, 1 to 4 that took wives, created the Nephilim, and taught advanced technology to humankind, ultimately leading to the great flood and their destruction. Nephilim means the fallen one, and they're described as some sort of large people like giants. There are several interpretations of the relationship between the sons of God and the Nephilim. Some have understood the sons of God to be fallen angels, and the Nephilim are the offspring they produced with human women. This view was described in the first book of Enoch, a non-canonical Jewish text, and remains a popular explanation. The first book of Enoch also notes the Nephilim were giants, which seems in accordance with the people of great size. The apparent gigantism of the Nephilim is argued to stem from their supernatural origin, though some have countered that is theologically problematic to suggest that angels or demons as purely spiritual beings could physically reproduce with humans. A less supernatural view holds that the Nephilim were simply men who fell away from righteousness. 
Specifically, some theologians have held that the sons of God are a reference to the descendants of Seth, the righteous son of Adam, and the Nephilim were members of his bloodline who rejected God. This view, known as the Sethian view, was held by St. Augustine and other church fathers, as well as by many Jewish theologians. The Sethian view is sometimes elaborated with the assertion that the daughters of men were the ungodly women of the bloodline of Cain, Adam's murderous son. With the Nephilim as mere humans, their great size is variously taken literally or metaphorically, though they were undoubtedly considered great warriors. The second part of Enoch's book is the Parables of Similitude, an apocalyptic book about the Son of Man and the Ancient of Days. These ancient prophecies of Jesus are directly in line with what we find in the Bible and are remarkably similar to the book of Revelation. The astronomical book is a detailed account of the stars and their functions. The dream visions is the prophecy of all human history, from the creation of mankind all the way to the end times and the final judgment. The past, present, and future are foretold in great detail. The prophecy of weeks is similar to the prophecy structure in the book of Daniel. The concluding section reminds us how we should live. Enoch recounts the lessons and wisdoms he has learned in life and that we are all subject to God. Finally, the Noah Fragments is the untold story of Noah from the Bible. We know more about his mission to save all humanity and the struggles of his father, Lamech, and his grandfather, Methuselah. Each work is independent, but all the works are bound by a common theme, the punishment of the wicked and the blessedness of the righteous. Mysteries of the Book of Enoch The Book of Enoch has several mentions that contradict the Bible. Enoch chapter 10 verses 1 through 3 mentions Noah even though the Bible teaches that Enoch was taken up to heaven years before Noah was born. It states that then the Most Holy and Great One spoke to Lamech's son in the presence of Uriel. Lamech said to him, Go to Noah and tell him about the flood. In my name hide and tell him about the time that the entire earth will collapse. A deluge is scheduled to hit the whole earth and it will wipe out everything that is there. The Bible never states that Enoch returned to earth after he was translated to heaven, so if he wrote the book of Enoch, how could he have known about Noah and the flood? In the book of Enoch, chapter 10, verses 8 through 9, God places all the blame for the corruption on earth on a demon named Azazel, which says that the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that Azazel taught him to ascribe all sin. The Bible doesn't mention any other demon besides Lucifer, also known as Satan or the Devil. Not to say there aren't any other demons there, still they're just never named, and Satan is the one who is ultimately blamed for the evils of our world because he is the originator of sin. Jesus said in 1 John chapter 3 verse 8, that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil fact. Also in the book of Enoch, chapter 13 verses 5 through 6 imply that the fallen angels repented for their sins. The Bible indicates the opposite because it says the fate of Satan and his angels is hellfire in Matthew chapter 25 verse 41, stating, Then shall he also say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels since the devil and his angels are consigned to hellfire that indicates they are unwilling to repent because everyone who repents from their sins is promised deliverance from destruction in hell. Chapter 3 of 2 Peter verse 9 states that the Lord does not waver in his promises as some consider slackness, but is patient for us and not in a position to allow anyone else to die, but everyone should become repentant. Not only is it claimed in the book that demons repented, but it also states that demons were no longer able to contact God after their initial rebellion, saying they could not speak with God or lift their eyes to heaven. But in Job chapter 1, Satan could come directly before God in heaven and talk to him about the Job and his fidelity. The concept of heaven is also described differently in Enoch's book, which describes God in heaven that is completely unbiblical. The Bible in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 21 describes the ground in the city of heaven as being made of gold. It says the street of the city was pure gold as it was transparent glass. The book of Enoch chapter 14 verse 10 says its groundwork was of crystal. This is just one example of the many contradictions the book of Enoch gives in its description of heaven compared to the Bible. There are many more contained in the book of Enoch chapters 14 verses 9 through 25. Many astronomical and meteorological contradictions in the Book of Enoch defy both the Bible and modern scientific facts. 
For example, in chapter 33, verses 1 through 4, the book of Enoch states that Enoch mapped and counted all the stars in the sky. However, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 22, says the stars cannot be numbered. It's a physical impossibility because there are so many of them. Astronomers estimate there are about 100 million stars in the Milky Way alone. Besides that, there are millions upon millions of other galaxies. Also in the book of Enoch, chapter 41, the wind, snow, hail, and moon all come off a wooden receptacle in heaven. This is ridiculous, unscientific, and unbiblical by now. You may be starting to see why was the book of Enoch is not a part of the Bible. Why is the book of Enoch not included in the Bible? The book of Enoch is found to be very inspiring and moving. It is a blueprint of all things past, present, and future, from Genesis to the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, to the secret day of judgment. It is almost the whole Bible in one book. But the important question is why the book of Enoch is not included in the Bible. While the book is fascinating to read, it is important to note that the first book of Enoch is not scripture. That is, the book is not inspired by God. The book was quoted in the apocryphal book of Baruch in several early church manuscripts. It contradicts the Bible numerous times, and the book of Enoch actually falls into a category of writings called the pseudepigrapha. This means that the author is not who he claims to be, and that makes sense because the book of Enoch speaks about Noah, and the Bible indicates that Enoch was taken to heaven before Noah's time. So it's much more likely that the book of Enoch was written by someone else later who falsely claimed that Enoch was the original author. Therefore, the book of Enoch doesn't have much value for Christians who are trying to learn the gospel truths. But one of the reasons Jude may have quoted from it is because it was well known at the time, and the passage he quoted from contained some inspirational truth which helped strengthen his case for the gospel. The authentic book of Enoch is called the Ethiopic Book of Enoch Pseudepigraphal Work. The only full extant copy has been found of the Ethiopic translation of an earlier Greek translation that was made from Palestine using the source Hebrew as well as Aramaic. Because the book of Enoch was written after Christ, who was trying to compile what Enoch said about his philosophy and teaching, which omits Methuselah according to oral tradition, as the source is not reliable, the book of Enoch did not remain within the books of the Bible and is considered doubtful. Enoch's book is a mystery and no one knows for sure whether it was written by Enoch himself or compiled by someone taking inspiration from him. A lot is not known about the book and a lot of mysteries are yet to be solved, but the book of Enoch is banned from the Bible and contradicts it in many ways. What do you guys think about the truth of the book of Enoch? Let us know in the comments section below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a big thumbs up, and share it with your friends. We'll see you in the next one.